Now, as part of that resolution, the council is asking the mayor to hold off on starting the entrance until they can determine what happened. So, Mayor, um, I'm asking you, and I know that you had said something off um, off the air before we started. Um, so, tell it, tell us what what happened. <sighs> That's a yawn. Let me start with that. Uh, just Carol's voice puts me in that mood um, of going to sleep. Uh, if the council would, you know, pull their head out of the sand, and when I say the council, I'm talking about Carol, Jody, and her son Adam, uh, the three who tend to lead the council around. Um, if they would read what's before them and read the history instead of giving us histrionics, uh, that would be great. Uh, I think you have in front of you, uh, if not, I can get it for you, the how Ormond Park quote unquote started. It was purchased by a previous city council that included the likes of Lucille Bielan and Elfrida Schmidt. It was approved unanimously for the express purpose of creating a driveway into Grossbeck Golf Course. Da -da -da -da, bing, ding, 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 ding. Can you imagine that, Brooke? I mean, the per property was purchased for the purpose. So it's interesting. The very people that are for, usually these folks are big on his history and preserving history, historical preservation, blah, blah, blah. But in this case, they've got amnesia. They don't want to know anything about why the property was purchased, et cetera, et cetera. Well, under the charter, uh, I'm responsible for real estate for the city. And I always like to start at the beginning. I like to start with, you know, what does the charter say? What, what can I do? What's my role? What is the council's role? Uh, so I'm in charge of real estate for the city. I try to manage it as best as possible. I have to develop a budget for the city, which I give the, my budget to the council. Uh, my budget passed nary without a change and there's money for this driveway in the budget. Uh, so, you know, the, the, the Parks Master Plan is an advisory document. The Parks Board is advisory. So again, I always say start at the beginning. If you're going to cover this stuff, if the council is going to be involved in this stuff, let's start with what are the rules. Before we start talking about who's breaking the rules, let's get all the rules, study them, know what we're talking about. Well, under the rules, we have a strong mayor form of government. Um, and I appoint the Parks Board the, with council approval. We have these advisory boards and commissions. Most of the boards are advisory, and the Parks Board is one of them. I appreciate their advice. We work together. But as Randy pointed out to them last night in my stead, uh, there are big things that happen sometimes that aren't in the master plan. The Scott House, the much ballyhooed, talked about, debated uh, uh, Board of Water and Light um, uh, substation that's being built at the former site of the Scott House on, on city property, that didn't go before the Parks Board. And the Scott House was within the purview of the Parks Board. It wasn't in the Parks Master Plan. But it went ahead with, uh, uh, you know, under mayoral power. And this is going to go ahead with mayoral power. So there's no great mystery about it. There's no, you know, as far as the investigation, all they had to do was ask a simple question. So they say they are going to do an investigation. So <laughs> what do you, what do you say about that? Can you well, stop that? I don't, I wouldn't try to stop it. Unlike some people, some executives in office, Brooke, I wouldn't try to stop that. But uh, there's no need for an, the investigation of what? Uh, the, the, the master plan is something we had a hand in. Uh, you know, I don't sit on the council dais, but I have a role in city government. And so there's no great mystery. Uh, I asked staff to put the driveway in the master plan, and it was in the master plan, and it came before the council for a vote. Here's an idea. Maybe council members like Carol Wood, who have so much time on their hands, should read what's put in front of them. Because in the resolution that they voted for was the new driveway for Ormond Park, uh, for, for Grosbeck uh, Golf Course. So again, the golf course is consistent with the original founders, the original framers, the reason why the property was purchased, uh, it's in the budget, and it's in the master plan as approved by the city council. But there were residents, I think there was just a protest last week about this, correct? So residents are pretty unhappy about this as well. Yes. Okay, so let's talk about that. Yes. Some residents, um, this is called reverse NIMBY, Brooke. Uh, as you know, NIMBY is not in my backyard. Sometimes people don't want a certain thing in their backyard where sometimes something has to go in somebody's backyard. This is reverse NIMBY. This is the concept that people who live around a park, God bless them, often take ownership over the park. And that can be a good thing in terms of keeping an eye on it, looking for misdeeds, uh, helping to clean up the park, etc. Where it can be overbearing is when people around the park begin to feel that they have a sense of entitlement about the future of the park, about you know the status quo, that they feel that the status quo will always remain the same. Whether that means fighting naturalization of a park or fighting any one change to a park, the physical characterizations, the physicality of the park. Um, again, it's, it's a double-edged sword, mostly good. 
I would say mostly good. But as mayor, being in charge of real estate for the city, I have to do the greatest good for the greatest number. I don't have the luxury of saying nothing will ever change in city government. No fire station will ever close. You know, no park will ever change its physicality. I don't have that luxury. I have to balance a budget. I have to do the greatest good for the greatest number. And again, Ormond Park, quote unquote, was purchased for the purpose of making Grosbeck Park more accessible. And the current driveway, nobody's talking about the neighbors on the other side who have to have hundreds of cars drive through their neighborhood daily and weekly. And the people that are endangered, the cats and the children that are endangered in that. This will be a straight shot driveway directly through which will enhance the safety for that neighborhood. Okay, so when you talk about neighbors, yes, I understand we live in a system, Brooke, where the squeaky wheel gets the grease. I, have to, I don't just listen to the squeaky wheel. I have a long 12-year history and beyond of not just listening to the squeaky wheel. Yes, I hear the squeaky wheel. I hear the squeaks. But I also hear those who may not come to a meeting. You know, we have to consider, again, the greatest good for the greatest number. And we have 114 parks. And Grosbeck Golf Course is losing $600,000 a year. That is unsustainable. They're taking up almost a third of the park's millage to maintain a golf course. I'm trying to make that golf course more sustainable on its own. So I've done, I, I'm doing three things. Transferring the ownership over to, uh, to LEPFA, which is more entrepreneurial, uh, building some new amenities in the park, and providing easy access, better, uh, safer access to the Grosbeck Golf Course, which almost, I think we over the years, various consultants have come in, and every one of them has said, you can't get to it. You can see Grosbeck Golf Course, but you can't get to it. It's You, you can't figure out. And, and so it's an issue. It's a real thing. This has been an issue for years. I hear the residents, and they've been successful in the past at stopping this. And so they believe they can stop it again. I understand that. This is just, It's just like building a sidewalk. It's something cities do. Cities have to build sidewalks. When we do, if we have to take down a tree or a mailbox, people get upset. I understand people will be upset. I understand their physicality will change. If you're used to having a backyard uh, where you know the dog can run free and you're not looking at anything, that's good. But what about the people who have hundreds of cars driving through their neighborhood all the time to get to the golf course? You know, For them, their life is going to be improved. And and for these folks, it's, it's not going to be terrible either. They still get to live next to a golf Golf course. The alternative is that in the long run, this golf course may have to close. You know, we've closed two golf courses. When I became mayor, there were four golf courses hemorrhaging funds. A city cannot sustain itself. That's how cities go bankrupt, Brooke. And cities do go bankrupt. This isn't some boogeyman claim, you know, some wild eyed claim. Cities go bankrupt. And I'm trying to pre prevent that from happening here in Lansing. And so tough decisions do have to be made. I know that's something the council wouldn't know much about. So let me ask you this. You um, you said that the neighborhood, one neighborhood seems like it will benefit from Ormond Park and this these improvements being made and the amenities and everything, but it sounds like the other side of the neighborhood might suffer. Is that true or no? It'll benefit and balance out. Well, they they certainly see it as suffering. Okay, so that's why the protest happened and that's right. why some residents are speaking out. Right, and, and again, any change is upsetting. If you, especially if you, when you change the physicality of something. I've been through this for 12 years. Again, even building a sidewalk can be controversial. Even when you're allowing kids to get off the street and onto a safe sidewalk, it is still controversial because it's a change in the physical environment. This is changing the physical environment, but we own that property. The fact is the city owns the property, and the fact is I'm in charge of real estate, and I invite people to go back to the charter. I am following the law, uh, the letter of the law, and you know, the money is there in the budget, and this has been talked about for several, you know, years or, or over a decade, in fact, since the property was purchased. Okay, I didn't make this up. This is There's a reason why it has been there, because it makes perfect sense. Again, I understand if your backyard is strictly a park, who wouldn't want to preserve that? But not everything that you like is able to be preserved. Okay, you don't own it. The city owns it. I'm in charge of 114 parks and a lot of other properties. I have to make all of that balance out. So do you think that if these improvements weren't made that the park would be at risk of going bankrupt? The, the, absolutely. Well, well, the park is bankrupt, clearly. I mean, the city is what's at risk of going bankrupt if we allow things like this to continue. I'm telling you, $600,000 deficit is unsustainable. We have to make that park somehow, uh, and that's what we're trying to do, is to try to get it in the black, try to get it solvent and uh, you know, allow, make it more accessible. And that's what we're going to do. We I, Again, it's, it's the greatest good for the greatest number. And this is not going to be terrible. Okay, well, thank you so much for answering that. And uh, we're going to take a quick break to go back to the network, uh, the network newscast. And the mayor will come back and share his thoughts on medical marijuana and the facilities throughout Michigan. Uh, thank you so much, Mayor. And uh, we'll be right back in just a few minutes. But uh, if you're wondering what the weather is going to be like, you can check out the forecast.